Hey there! It's time for Voiceover Body Shop Tech Talk Dog. number 56. Six. We don't have to use our hands anymore. Whoa, See, it just says 56. Big numbers. Yeah, wow. Big numbers, no whammies. <laughs> okay. Yes, Tech Talk 56. We've got all sorts of great stuff to talk about tonight. You know, the stuff that you we normally talk about, but updates like what? Well, like should you buy a Mac Mini or an iMac <laughs> M1 yet? Um, you know, what kind of gear or should you be shopping for or not at some websites? Um, and, you know, some new tech tech gear that's been released, acoustical stuff, and glitches. Glitches. Glitches we got. Glitches are us. Glitches on, get stitches. That's right. <laughs> I remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Well, stay tuned for all that. Get your questions into the chat room right now. It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom. The engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great-sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George The Tech with him. The Tech with him, yeah. And this is VoiceOver. <laughs> Body shop or VO BS Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk number 56. That's what it says at the bottom there. It's like being in a sushi bar. Things going by. Sushi bar of text. Yeah, whenever I have lunch with Mark Cashman, we go to this place in. It, in in uh, in in Santa Santa Clarita and there's a, yeah. it's called the Yamato and it's like the yeah. conveyor belt of Those sushi. Are fun. Those yeah, are fun and weird. <laughs> no, they the do. They do. They, they're around. They're out there. <laughs> anyway, we're here to talk about your home voiceover studios and uh, what you need to sound great. And everybody says, well, everybody says I have a great voice. Yeah. Well, it doesn't mean anything if you're <laughs> talking into. A yeah. Radio Shack Electret condenser microphone from, you know, in your bathroom. Anyway, but we get lots of questions, you know, because George and I do this full time. You know, we are constantly working with home voiceover studios and making them sound the way they're supposed to sound like. And there's a way it's supposed to sound like. And most people don't even know what that is. Fortunately for you, George and I do, because that's what we do. We listen and we're like... Eh, it's a little this, a little that, you know, people will send us audio and generally if we, you know, if someone says they're having a problem, it's five seconds that we know what it is. You know, it's it, pretty much, it's, oh, it's always, you know, it's one of these or it's one of those. It's your refrigerator. How many times I figured out it's the refrigerator the refrigerator. It's, it's the neighbor's washer dryer. It's the mic is pointing the wrong direction. It's the Harley it's the, down the street, you it's know, the wrong it's the th interface things like input. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so if you if you need help with your home studio, if you got a problem, or if you're totally perplexed, and trust me, we meet a lot of perplexed perplexed people who can probably say that better than I, um, <laughs> who are like, how do I do this? And especially during the pandemic, there you know everybody had to have home studio, so we've been very very busy in the last uh, you know thirteen fourteen months, and uh, but you know something. It's not that hard. It's not rocket science, but it helps to have a professional at your side, whether virtually or or right there with you. And now we're able to get out and and work with people again, which is nice. Uh, yeah, starting know, like, to do that again. Like like getting into people's homes. Not that I just like getting into people's homes. You know, like you know, five minute photo or whatever the name of that movie was. I, I like to use a pocket <laughs> knife. Sometimes I can jimmy the. Oh, oh! You mean you're welcomed into their homes? Yes, yes. They oh, actually invite me. In. It's not like okay. I'm like, never mind. Let's see if I can fix this home voiceover studio. <laughs> <laughs> and and now that we've totally turned them off on that, if that you want to work with one of us, all you have to do is uh, contact us, and we both have great websites where we talk about what we do and how we do it, and lots of other great resources. Speak and for yourself. You, my website ain't, ain't that great. That's why I'm getting a new one made this year. Well, well. <laughs> But it works. It, as long as it works. And that's the most important <laughs> thing. If they want, you want to talk to George and see all the stuff he does, where do they go? Uh, you can head over to georgethe.tech. And if that just has you confused, head also to georgethetech.com. They both work. And they both go to the same place where you can book my services or get a sound check. Dan calls them sound checks. No, he doesn't. He calls them specimens. That's right. put them in his cup over that at... There is a specimen collection cup at the bottom of the homepage of homevoiceoverstudio.com. Uh, yeah, click on that. It's a Dropbox. You know, tell, you know, when you drop off a, a sample for anybody, for George or I or anybody, or, you know, or if you're doing it on Facebook or something and you're like, does anybody know what's wrong with my, I hear a buzz, I hear a hum or something like that. Unless people hear it. And get a good description of yeah. what it is that you're using, you know, the microphone, please, your computer. Please what kind stop of, describing your audio problems. Yeah. yeah <laughs> with we, just we, text. Like, no, that's not a bu that's not a buzz, that's a hum. You know, there's a big difference between those <laughs> yes. two. But you know, and, and if you can you can drop that stuff off uh, you know, using the specimen collection cup and for twenty five dollars, I will give you a very thorough analysis. And this week again, the cup is overflowing with a lot of people who Apparently, you want to make sure their audio is right. Some of them are great. Some of them, are, you know, it's like they need a little bit of help. And if you need some major help, you can do a consultation with, uh, with me or with George if you want to work with him. And uh, we will teach you how to do it right. So, again, it's like a cassette recorder, guys. The computer stuff is all kind of like in the background. Distraction. <laughs> yeah, it's like hit, re you know, play, record, stop. You know, the rest is just, you know, it's your computer's acting like a cassette recorder. Remember those? I know our audience demographics, they know what a cassette recorder is. So anyway, so let's get into the meat of the matter and let's take a look at uh, what's going on in the world of voiceover tech. What's in your update this week? Well, there's quite a few things, so I'll try to get right to it. First of all, I'll talk a little bit about Apple Silicon because that's kind of the computer, the computer of the year. Honestly, uh, it definitely is. Um, Dan and I are both, both running them, the M1 Mac minis full time in our studios. So we're really, as we sometimes call it, dog fooding the new computer. In other words, we're eating dog the dog fooding. food to make sure it tastes oh, good. Tastes all good. Okay. Yeah. If we're going to recommend it, you got to taste it first. So, um, <laughs> you know, somebody has to do that, right? Somebody's um, got to taste the dog. There's dog food tasters. You would I figure they would use a I dog to do that. that's a thing. Um, <laughs> but we are really testing them out and. Um, I would start I would give a quick update. I've um, today I rebooted my computer right before the show because I hadn't in a couple of weeks, and you know that's bad, bad George, bad George. Um, but I think that's a good thing to show that it has been quite stable. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't believe I rebooted the computer since the last show taping two two weeks ago. So hmm. it is a, uh, it's been it's been overwhelmingly reliable. Um, it's still running barely warm like it's almost confusing whether the computer is on i'm touching it and it's not even really touch, warm. touch my let's see what it's doing there 
Is it? Oh, God. It feels like a refrigerator for crying out loud. <laughs> it's freaking weird. <laughs> it is quite amazing. So if you want a computer that's quiet and, and, and unobtrusive and no drama, the M1 Macs are great. So they released the new iMac in fun, flavorful colors. Like they used um, to? Like the gel colors it, that they used to have? It's a total throwback, yeah, to, the, uh, to those days when they had those colorful iMacs. And uh, they look pretty cool. They, they, they basically look like a ginormous iPad on a stand. Um, with one major missing feature, and that is you can't touch the screens, <laughs> which drives me crazy. Apple the, hasn't me, d- gone into the touchscreen stuff, have they? The, the, to me, the only reason to buy the actual iMac M1 would be as if it actually was touchscreen a bit, uh, active. And it's it's not. Um, I, I, I used to think it was funny when people would reach over and touch their screens. I find myself starting to do it from time to time. Like. I would not at my desktop because it's not as common, but on a laptop, it's like, oh, I can't do that. I, so I'm hoping that's coming. Um, now, for those that really want a touchscreen computer, they can buy the iPad, iPad uh, Pro, or even just the basic iPad, which is still pretty good. Um, but they're still hampered by running Mac or not Mac OS, but iOS. And uh, so I, I won't be buying an I, iMac Pro, not an iMac Pro, but an iPad Pro for a long time until really everything that we do on our desktops works and feels basically the same on an iPad Pro. And you can get a fully pimped out iPad Pro, I mean loaded, listen to this number, for $2,400. Yes, you can. For an iPad? For an iPad. (laughs) With two terabytes of memory, of, of storage, 16 gigabytes of memory in an iPad. It's crazy. Um, but it really, really, an iPad has become, inside, guts-wise, the same as a MacBook Air. It's got the M1 chip. It's got the same amount of storage, the same amount of memory. It's just inside an iPad. Just it's can't weird. do this. all the things that you can do with it. You know what? Though. Apple, they are devious. They know that uh, if we sell you a laptop, <laughs> you'll still want a touchscreen, so you'll still want an iPad. They still can sell you two devices. Um, so I, in terms of the new M1 iMac, if you're just jones in for a new mac and you really like that form factor there's nothing wrong i can't see anything that would be wrong with the new imac m1 i mean it's the same guts as the m the mini and the macbook air i've been using them for six months it's been great if you're a pro tools user no don't buy it yet you can't use pro tools on the silicon Macs yet but practically everything else works on it and um so I would say it's a good it's a good value. I I really prefer buying a Mac Mini and a separate screen because when you have to throw that Mac Mini out, you're throwing out a little box this big. You're not throwing out this 27 inch giant you know ginormous thing. Ten years from now, in the, yeah, in yeah. the in the waste. Well, hopefully ten years. I mean, sometimes they don't last that long. Uh this is just a little. Uh, this is a little PSA, and I'm, this is just for anybody at Sweetwater that happens to be listening. Please stop recommending the Shure SM7B for voiceover to customers. Thank you. I will keep saying that until you stop or <laughs> until our listeners start telling you guys to stop recommending. Until enough of us nag them to stop, it is not the ideal voiceover mic. By any stretch of the mind, it is definitely not. Great, great for singers. You know, great for singers, great for being Joe Rogan on a podcast. It's that's what that. But you not know, for but voiceover. It, it's not a great voiceover mic for for many reasons, which you've heard us talk about. Um, we're going to talk about acoustics quite a bit tonight, but um, one of the reasons why so many of us are getting acoustical foam that's really inadequate is we're getting all this foam that looks like pyramids and waves and this thing and that thing, and the problem is is. You, if you start with foam that's two inches thick and then you basically carve away 50% of it, it's now essentially as effective as foam that's only one inch thick. Think about that. You've basically taken a two inch panel and then chopped out all this negative space. It loses effectiveness. And if you look at websites like Oralex's site and you look at something called the NRC, that's the noise reduction coefficient of a product. So you know how much it absorbs. You will see that those wedgy ones and the pyramid ones and all that are nowhere near as good as the ones that are perfectly flat. So if you're shot out there shopping for foam for your booth and you really want to use foam, even though we've said, or I've said a lot to 
avoid foam, go with the flat foam panels. There's one, the, the RLX brand is called Sono Flat, but whatever it is, go with flat panels because you're getting more density and more coverage in a smaller space, which is what you need in a small booth. And it is amazing how much, how much better those panels are. Have you seen those, Dan? They're just, they are don't look like much. It's just a square. It's just flat thing, yeah. with a little beveled edge. But it works a lot better. Speaking of acoustics as well, Studio Bricks. Um, I was really had an interesting phone call with Guillermo, the founder of Studio Bricks, um, or Zoom call, where he showed me some new acoustical materials that they've actually are uh, having manufactured in-house. And um, apparently I'll be getting some to show you guys. So... This is still early. I don't have anything to show you, but um, it's pretty darn cool, and it's not made of foam. Um, in fact, it's about 50% PET. I don't remember what PET stands for, but that's like a recycled material, recycled out of like milk bottles, I believe it is. So it's okay. like it's half recycled. It's made out of a totally different material. It doesn't have any odor at all, um, which is really important for a lot of voice actors, and uh, it looks pretty cool too. So... That's coming but, from Studio Bricks. And but does it work? Neat. I think it's the most important thing. Does it work? <laughs> yeah. And in fact, this is one thing I said to Guillermo. He's like, I said, I want to hear the Studio Bricks with a, 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 an, um, a TLM 103 doing a voiceover that doesn't need any fine tuning. I want it to sound great literally out of the box. And that's, that's the goal. And I think that's where they're heading with the Studio Bricks. In fact, he told me they are now hiring. They have in staff and they've got about 50 people there. They've got someone now who's actually an audio engineer on the oh. payroll. Oh, that's which, good. <laughs> that sounds obvious, right? Yeah. None of the other ones have, a, have an acoustician who knows how to tune spaces on staff making booths. If, if they do, let me know. But never that I've heard of. So that's pretty cool. Um, moving on quickly. If you are wanting to dabble in podcasting and want to have the cool bells and whistles that we use like in a Rodecaster Pro, but don't want to drop that kind of money or don't have the space... There's a new thing they just released called Rode Connect. Now, you have to use it only with the Rode NT-USB mini mic. So that's the catch. It's a $99 USB mic. But it's basically using some DSB inside the mic and tying into the software and making a virtual Rodecaster Pro on your desktop. So it does a lot of the same stuff. You can do, you can do playbacks. You can do loopback. You can record the show everything, and it's using the mic itself to handle some of that processing. And what's cool is you can plug four of them into the same computer through like a USB hub and actually have a live show mixed that way. Um, it's very clever. I mean, it's, I mean, I don't know if it's totally relevant to our audience, but if you're in podcasting or streaming, it was really cool to check out, and it's an impressive piece of tech. Adobe Audition. Glitches, I guess. Yes, Dan, you've been hearing this. You put this in here. What do you think? What do you think's going on with Adobe Audition and glitches? Um, is it is it the newest newest version, like the twenty twenty one? Yeah, I, I you know I updated as soon as they you know they come out. And yeah, uh, well, I would too if I was on a, an M one Mac. I would I would want to have the right. absolute latest version to make sure it was going to run well on my brand new Mac, right? Right, yeah, and and you know, I, the interesting glitches. A lot of it is is stuff disappearing, uh, visually or audio, v visually things. Audio oh, wise, visually. audio wise, it always sounds fabulous. Oh, that's good. Well, that's the most important. Yeah, thing. mostly it has to do with the um, uh, the spectrograph. The the, well, the, the spectrograph disappears. Like you'll be recording something, and you'll look at the playback, and and it you'll it'll be there, and then it won't be. It's like, uh, where'd it go? Um, okay. So mm -hmm. you save the file, you come back in, you open it again. Oh, it's back. So there's obviously some, there is a piece of code in there somewhere that's like, you know, if this, then this, well, right, then, the, right. then the, if is apparently happening in certain situations and then that happens. Right. Right. Uh, from an, a total, total algorithm, uh, vocabulary. Uh, but you know, I imagine they'll fix it. I, I know that, uh, you know that the guys at uh, at Adobe are looking at that, and they're well, hopefully trying I, to fix it. I installed it. it recently, and um, I'm running it on my M1 Mac, and it is still an Intel app. So ah, the, the newest, most up to date version is still running in what's called Rosetta. So it's being converted from the Intel 
uh, processing languages to the new silicon processing languages and something's getting lost in translation probably huh i mean yeah. that's what i'm guessing but yeah that's when, I, when I, I figured when too. i do get info on the app it says application kind intel and it, so that uh so we might be waiting a little while this must have been in the hopper for too long before the silicon mac came out and they, they're gonna have to do either a major update or wait till next year yeah, for yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm careful. I mean, if there's something long that I have to do, I will record it in Twisted Wave and then import it into uh, Audition just to be safe. How's Twisted Wave been for you? Twisted Wave's been fabulous. Good. Not not okay. an issue. It's ne I've never had an issue with Twisted Wave. Yeah, I mean, Super he's sweet. always doing little little tiny bug fixes and incremental updates and stuff. Yeah. It's like version 25.8 now or something. Yep. Um, but yeah, and if anything goes wrong with it, it's fixed so quickly. And that's the beauty of working with these small boutique manufacturer coding people, as opposed to a giant behemoth Adobe, you know, you get much more rapid support. So Absolutely. anyway, that's well, my I, tech it, update and let's have our, our little discussion. Our weekly discussion. Well, this is based on a question we got from Peter Punce, uh, who asks, and this is something we talk about all the time. He says, if I've learned, learned anything from VOBS and other sources, well, don't go to those. Uh, it's the <laughs> top quality voiceover audio hinges on A, proper acoustics, excellent. B, a good condenser mic that suits the individual's voice, okay. C, a quality interface with good preamps and converters. And D, proper use of the equipment to produce good clean audio, which is sort of A, B, and C. Um, you know, to me, everything's about acoustics. But he goes on, he says, given that these ingredients can be achieved using fairly simple, cost-effective setup, why do some talents invest so much more than they need? For instance, why does someone drop $800 on an Apollo twin, and what benefits do the twins' plugins really bring for voiceover? What's the point of spending so much money to add so much extra flavor to VO audio? And that is an excellent question hmm. and probably the reason we do this show. <laughs> Somebody's been excellent. able to narrow it down to that, that whole, that whole thing, <laughs> you know, I mean, the, here's the way I look at it. Ones and zeros are ones and zeros. As far as I'm concerned, what the real problems that exist, I think with cheaper equipment is, especially with preamps is the preamps may not be very good. So if you're like buying a $50 interface, you're going to get hissing you because you've got to generate a lot of gain because you're not supposed to be talking so loud when you're doing voice one over. brand starts with a and another one starts with B B not going yes. to call them out, but there, you know, some cheapy, cheapy ones out there that are yeah, yeah, rather like, noisy, especially if that interface has a tube in it. Run away. Yeah. Yeah. Dead t tube. I mean, it's a gimmick, you know, I mean, I yeah. like tubes. I like tubes because I've got old radios and, you know, yeah. and I, they're you know, in there but, for a reason though. The, yeah. But they're, yeah, exactly. But they're not that's there the for the best voice. they had in 1940, 1950. That's right. And it's fun learning about them. But yeah. uh, the fact of the matter is, is digital technology is, they've gotten it down. So everything is extremely user friendly. And I think what happens is, is people get into some of these, uh, higher end things like the Apollo twin, which of course well, you have put on they your go hang out on Facebook groups. Well, yeah, I mean, you can do that. It's fun, but you know, do it to meet old girlfriends, not, you know, try and talk about voiceover equipment. Uh, yeah, it's like you're going to really run into uh constant upgrade spiral problems. Exactly. Because you're going to always want to try the newest thing because you heard five other people say, well, that's what I use. That's what I use. Right. Uh, but uh, they're not in your closet. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know some people who are very disciplined. They, they know what they're using is what's making the money. They know how to use it and it works. Um, and they're not getting sucked into that upgrade spiral. You know, they're using things that are just reliable for them and don't have a learning curve, but yeah, it's why do people buy shiny objects? Why do people buy new cars? Why do people buy a new car every three years or lease them or you always have the latest thing? Everybody needs, there's something to it for them that gets them excited, gets them wanting to record every day, or it just gives them some leg up in their mind that it's going to help them book. Um, the, the Apollo Twin, I can talk about for a second, but it's, it's, it's certainly not bad equipment. The quality of it's quite good. Its feature set is exhaustive. Um, but 
it's got a learning curve to it. And a lot of the folks that end up buying them only know how to get the very most basic functionality out of it. And so they're really just using it like they would a Scarlet. Mic right. goes in, turn up mic. Um, For $600 less. Yes. And the, the <laughs> converters and preamp circuits, if you put a really fine point on it, yes, they are a little bit better than what you're going to get theoretically on a Scarlet 2i2 Generation 3. Um, but not that much different. Dan and I did a shootout a couple, uh, six, eight months ago. Maybe actually, maybe it was a year. It was late last Probably more summer. than that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And we did a whole USB interface shootout and you got to hear, go, go check it out on Google. Um, type in VOBS USB interface shootout. And you get to hear a whole bunch of these um, side by side where we test them. And you'll hear how little difference it really, really makes. Yeah. And so the processing plugins, who do they benefit? I guess people doing like affiliate stuff or stuff for radio, things where they need just very rapid turnaround. They, they want to record it, hear it the way, it, the way it's going to sound on the air and print it and send it off. It's old school. It really is kind of old school. To, to, to do it that way, that front-end processing. But some people just find that a way they prefer to work. But most people, like we, Dan, and everybody else that I work with, process it in post when necessary. Right, because you can control it there. If you do it, put it in the front end, it's there forever. Yeah, and you better it, be really consistent. Like if you're going to record front-end processing, you have to be really really consistent about your performance and your mic gain settings because that processing is going to do different things based on how loud or how soft you're performing that it's it's difficult to get that same level of consistency with front end processing unless you've got 10 to 20 years of voiceover or even radio experience right i i find that a lot of times a lot of stuff gets recommended for a number of reasons one there's an intimidation factor in there let's face it most voiceover people are the nicest people around. They, I mean, all my friends are voiceover people. But there are a few slugs out there that are like, well, I'm an expert. And I don't want people competing with me. So they'll throw out stuff to throw people down a technological rabbit hole. Or they'll show pictures of their unbelievably beautifully appointed, incredibly detailed, expensive studios. You know, right. That and, is, which is fine. But it's right. not going to change the way you book your gigs in voiceover. Right. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're the one that built it. So, I mean, you want yeah. people to show off the stuff you do. Oh, I <laughs> love showing off the studios <laughs> I've designed for other people. But, uh, yeah, you're going to see some amazing studios out there. People are very proud of the work they've put into their studios. And some people believe that, you know, the way it looks is the way you're going to feel. And that's the way you're going to sound. There's, there's different reasons for all that. But, yeah. You have to know what it is that gets your performance across and gets you the gig. And 90% of the time, what, what, uh, you know, what transformer is in your preamp or what new old stock tube is in your mic, 99% of the time ain't going to make a lick of difference. It right. just ain't. Right. Well, we, we, we had Kevin Gershan on of, of last month and he was saying, he says, look, you know, we're looking for interpretation. And this is a top level CBS producer. And he's like, if someone does the read right and their mic is like, eh, we bring them in, you know, mm -hmm. or we tell them to get that, you know, a certain type of microphone. But mm -hmm. most of the time, if somebody's that good, they generally are going to sound good. And, you know, as long as you stick to the basics that we talk about, the acoustics, soundproof, you know, not a lot of sound coming in, very little reflection, proper microphone technique, proper and distance, proper orientation to the mic. And Turn setting your, your levels. Right. And that's got, that's got nothing to, yeah, especially your fridge. Uh, that's got nothing to do with all these plugins that, say, an Apollo Twin has. It's not the plugins that are going to get you work. And if you think, well, it's going to make me sound really great. You yeah, know, now anybody you, can have a manly mic preamp with right. three-to-one compression. But if you sound like this, knob. it's not going to make a difference. It really <laughs> doesn't. Anyway. So that, that's our rant on that. But we say this every week and, you know, we still see the stuff on Facebook and, you mm -hmm. know, we end up mopping up. Of course, you and I don't always agree on these sorts of things, but, you're, but your point that you say and is, is, is right. There are people that are real high-end people that have to be, 
you know, they're doing the stuff live that, you know, and they're doing the promo work right and the imaging air, or it goes to air right. very quickly. It's got to be done a certain way, yeah. but that's not what got them that job. There's it's a small niche. Yeah, of people. It, it, it is. So do as we say, <laughs> and your life will be much better. That's at least that's in your voiceover life. About. We right. want you Don't, to have a low stress. Yeah. Don't ask life. us for marital advice. That would be a bad idea. <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got lots of questions coming up uh, from Facebook and Clubhouse, so stay tuned. We'll answer those right after this. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> VoiceOverEssentials.com would like you to know that there's a lot of so-called experts out there saying go to bedding and bath stores and buy a mattress topper and use the foam for your DIY studio or portable setup. And counterfeit offshore acoustic foam is flooding the web. Studio foam, although expensive, is all about shaping your sound so your recordings sound the same as a professional audio studio. The sound our clients expect to hear. And will the memory foam have the memory of how you sound? Look, bed foam is great for keeping an old mattress alive and preventing bed sores, but it doesn't cut it for acoustical treatment. The Portabooth Plus and Pro use only Oralex Studio Foam. They have a limited inventory of both while shipping logistics of the new inventory is delayed. With the country starting to travel again, the booths are selling fast. So go on over to voiceoveressentials.com and get yours now while the getting's good. That's voiceoveressentials.com for the Portabooth Pro and Plus. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, Okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. But not until I tell you about Source Elements Source Connect. One more commercial for you guys. Uh, Source Connect is the tool for pros who want to play with the pros. Like if you're a voice actor who wants to work with the top studios on the best paying gigs, Source Connect is one of the most commonly used tools for that, which allows you your voiceover studio, the sound of your voice, everything about your room, everything is sent down the wire off to a studio somewhere else and is being recorded in Pro Tools or whatever DAW that their engineer is using in real time. When that session's over, you say, thanks very much. You wait 90 to 120 days for your check and you hang up. That's it. That's the beauty of doing Source Connect gigs. They are, they're really a great way to work and work in a collaborative atmosphere. Um, if you want to get set up, head over to source-elements.com and you can get yourself a 15-day free trial. I would recommend, if you're really serious about it, to start a subscription and that way you'll get their help to get things dialed in. That's part of the price. It's kind of, you can either pay me to do it or pay them. It's kind of a balance and you might as well start your subscription up and, and be ready to go. Their team of support is amazing. Um, really, they're really, they've really had an incredible buildup of support, which is wonderful. So anyway, that's it. We're going to come back and dive into questions. There's a lot. We'll be right back. I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beetle body shop. And we are back with lots and lots of questions. This is why we do it. That's right. That's why we're here. 
Anyway, let's get going on some of these. Uh, I, I like this first one. Let me do this do first one. Just, uh, Tom Wells says, I was in my attic and found my Polk audio speakers from college. Remember Joe Jackson and Marshall Crenshaw? Yeah, a little after my college years. Uh, but I remember them. I wondered what I'd have to do to use one or both of them as a monitor. First thing is how to connect one to the interface or PC. These use good old-fashioned speaker wire with no plugs or connectors. TRS plugs anticipate uh, a ground wire, but the old stereos just have two wires. Am I onto something, or is this a fool's errand? P.S. Headphones are still the choice, my choice for listening to work, but I was looking for a way to put those old pulks back into service. Well, the thing about my, uh, old speakers is, is they are not self-powered. Uh, they don't have their own little amplifiers in them. They require your old... Morant stereo amp or whatever it was you were maybe you got a polk audio receiver or something like that you need your receiver and you know your stereo amplifier to run those if you got a really good one you just run the the rca jacks off of your interface into your stereo and then you know and use your dvr or whatever setting you have on there and play them that way are they going to be as good as studio monitors they're not designed quite the same way. They're not loud, you know, studio monitors aren't loudspeakers. They are what we call near field monitors. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're two to three feet between them and they're angled towards you, that's their sweet spot. So there's not going to be quite the same sweet spot on a pair of very loud speakers. Uh, but you can use them, you know, or, or, and of course they're great for listening to, you know, Joe Jackson. Yeah. I've got some, um, paradigm speakers on my shelf up here. Um, they they would be considered definitely home speakers, but they had one model which are up there in that big pile of speakers called the mini monitor, and I actually used them as studio monitors for quite a long time, and they were really quite excellent. Some some consumer speakers are good enough or accurate enough that you could use them for for monitoring, but uh, keep in mind that they're really made to make music sound exciting, uh, not to be dead honest. So. Right. That's that's a big deal, but yeah, you can you can use any old any old receiver, power amplifier, anything you can trust. That's uh, and use them in in your studio with good success. Yeah. Okay, you get the question from Grace. Well, we have a clubhouse uh, clubhouse uh, question. Nothing's uh, actually looks like we actually do. Is I see PLR in there. Hi PLR. Yes. Hello. Hi there. How are you? Hi. Hi, babe. How you doing? So um, you guys are a regular comedy act, by the way. Thank you. Just, you've had me laughing pretty much Good. this past, last half hour. So. <laughs> we try. We um, really do. <laughs> um, so I, uh, so like about 10 days ago, I ran out, um, panicked and got a, uh, an Insignia port hub, um, which turned out to be kind of flimsy and it was expensive at Best Buy. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the Best Buy house stuff brand. Garbage. Yeah. yeah. yeah I know, right exactly. And I was so pissed. So I was like, okay, I will get it on Amazon. And a friend of mine, um, a mutual friend, said that you told him years ago to get IO Gear 7. So I looked it up on Amazon and it looks really cool. Kind of looks like a little spaceship um, when it's on its, on, you know, oh, ride it up. It, it'll stand on its edge, like standing yeah. vertical. Okay. Yes, and he's had it for like ten years, but they do not sell it anymore on Amazon. So yeah, that's called um, technology, and things don't <laughs> tend to be available ten years later. Okay, but it looks really cool. And I was yeah, thinking, it is available, but it's it's used, and so I was like, okay, I need a good one that's not flimsy. Um, I would never so buy you... an ancient used piece of gear for a oh, USB God, no, hub. No, not in a million years. So yeah, what can you recommend? And uh, and for. See, because what I, I realized that four four ports were not going to do it. So, what what USB hub can you recommend that is good and is like seven? Um, these the the things the the brands. There's certain brands that have been sticking around for years, and there's some that kind of come and go on like Amazon and stuff. Um, I wish I could read the brand of the one I have right here. I want to say mine's an Anchor. Anchor anchor hubs are are tend to be any, everything from Anchor tends to be pretty darn good like in terms of quality for the for the money A N K E R um I find them to be really good Dan's holding um, Dan wants to sell you this one actually the one he's holding yeah. <laughs> this is a pluggable uh me, this is a super duper hub it's more than just a normal USB hub it actually provides video outputs and other even ethernet 
I would call that more of a docking station because you get That's hub, fine. you get video outputs. So docking station. Yeah. yeah. And so those are nice. A docking station design are going to be more expensive, but they're going to give you a lot more connectivity, including Ethernet. And you can literally have a single cable going to your Mac with everything plugged in. And when you want to take your laptop with you, you unplug and go. Which, which computer is it you're plugging it into? I have a MacBook Pro. Which year? Um, 2016. Oh, 2016. So that's going to have USB-C. So, um, and definitely look for hubs that have USB-C compatibility because yeah. they're going to have faster performance overall. So if you're going to okay. plug a USB hub, like a USB hard drive into it, uh, it'll perform better. Um, USB-C also has more power or current. So like things- there's, Okay, so there's one here that says um, that Anchor USB-C hub power expand 8-in-1 USB-C adapter with 100 watts power delivery, 4K, 60 hertz. Oh, uh, yeah. So when it says power delivery, yeah. that means that that hub has enough power supply capability that it will power your computer as well. So you literally have a Ooh. hub that with one single cable that plugs into your Mac. And so if you want to be able to quickly take your Mac in and out of the studio and have a single point of connection, that's the way to do it. It's And so those those kind of cross over from hubs to what we would call docking stations because they give you every type of connection known to, to man. But uh, I bet it would probably work pretty well. I mean, I definitely read the reviews. I like to look in aggregate and I like to look and see who, which people used it on an actual Mac because many of them are going to be on Windows and just make sure. Right. That's, but okay. uh, yeah, Anchor is uh, definitely a solid brand and so is yeah. pluggable. Okay. Right. Okay, cool. I, I just wanted to make one comment. No, absolutely. I just want to make one comment on what you were talking before about um, uh, uh, audition. And I noticed, because I had my my 10-year-old, um, uh, my 10-year-old iMac, and I could not uh, upgrade to, um, obviously, I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't even upgrade to Mojave. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, it what what I found with audition was that it would it would just kind of start kind of like, clanking out it would say um it, i almost pretty much every time i would open it i would have to go and rearrange and, and and do my um rearrange the settings and i noticed with my imac with my macbook pro once i upgraded to big sur um i don't i don't have that problem anymore it doesn't it doesn't do that now that Good. doesn't solve the problem but i mean upgrading the system really made did wonders so i just want to sometimes it does yeah Yeah, sometimes it does i I always say if it ain't broke don't fix it if it's broken try updating it because it might fix it exactly (laughs) you never know shout out to dan by the way because dan was the one who um uh basically said you know you can just use your macbook pro instead of getting a whole new thing for right now and so there you go thank you dan you're welcome (laughs) thank you lady see you later thanks bill all right thanks everybody all right, question from Grace Newton. When I press click to start monitoring in Audacity, my noise floor doesn't even cause a flicker. But when okay. I normalize the track, I can hear some, so I have to then use noise reduction. Is that common? Well, that's well, a good question. Yeah, probably not recording loud enough to start with. And, uh, you know, are you yeah. normalizing it? And, um, uh, yeah, well, she says, but when I normalize, if you're normalizing your track and the, you know, you've got little tiny waveforms and you're trying to get it up to minus three, you're going to get hissing. Yeah, everything so, that's there is magnified. The room tone, the noise, your own voice, when you normalize, everything gets louder. So yeah. that noise may have been there to begin with, but you just didn't notice because it was really, really low. Right. So, so that could make be sure your levels on. are right. That was no- item number no- number three. <laughs> on our list make, exactly make, make sure that your levels are correct you want to be peaking you know you know upwards between minus six and minus four and consistently modulating you know to like minus nine or so uh people are like like minus 15 it's like it, it's a little low but i maybe we just need to explain the level thing a little bit better but we do well, that when I, we work with people yeah exactly plus if you watch the last 175 shows you'll hear us mention it at least once um, or twice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this one's from, uh, let's see, Pamela Urar. You want to read that one? Sure. I, a long and detailed post. I, I, she uses a 2008 MacBook Pro, an old, an old computer, 
El Capitan was as high as I can go, just sort of mm-hmm. like what Pilar was just saying. Planning to update at the next Apple sale. Until then, I've noticed my live sessions, Zoom meeting, start fine, but disintegrate from clicks to robotic sounding, even then, and, and then even pure static. Laptop mic and speaker work fine. I use an AT3035 with a, uh, a Focusrite Scarlet third, Scarlet third Gen. Mm-hmm. When the problem happens in the past session, you suggested contacting Focusrite since it since then it doesn't happen, of course. Um, yeah, you know, as you get old, as, as, as well as we get older, we don't function as well. But as computers get older, they, you know, a 2008, that's a 13-year-old computer. That's like, you know, driving a 1995 Volvo. Yeah, yeah it's going to move forward and backwards, but it's... <laughs> It's, it might be just, it, yeah, and the CPU might not be keeping up. Yeah. The, remember, mean, those, these things are running a lot of data. And, yeah. I mean, if you were running software from 2008, it would have no problem. But when you're running Zoom and Meet and all these Chrome-based tools, you're running software from 2021. And uh, the amount of hardware that they're expected for you to have to run correctly is going to be much newer than 2008. So don't expect things to run perfectly well on a 2008 machine. Again, if you went back in a time machine, and if there was Zoom in 2008, it would work flawlessly. <laughs> and I can tr- trust me, Skype back in 2008 did work flawlessly because I used it. Um, but yeah, it's just your computer's not keeping up with uh, with modern software, especially Chrome. Chrome hammers your computer, completely right. hammers it. Uh, Dave G has a question for you. Uh, he says, would George look down on someone using an AI one as a primary interface or save it for the travel box? It's a great little interface. I, why would anyone have, you know, is, is it going to make a difference? No. It's no, a, I'm not going to look down on it. I, we I don't know to, if it has unique, I don't know if the preamps in it are unique to the ones in the Roadcaster Pro, but venture to guess they're probably the same um, because they're developed by the same company. And right, they sound fantastic, Dan. We're, we're, we, we did we did a part of our was part of our shootout. Did we have the AI? We one? did have the yeah, AI. Well, that's the first time I saw that, and it works. Yeah. It works really good with the NT1 and NT1A and the other you know Rode mics. But it worked great on on our mics too. You and I, we're talking to you folks through the preamps that Rode makes right now. So you'll yeah. be the judge. Yeah, this we're using Rodecaster Pros, and this is their preamp. This is they're not going to make seventeen different kinds of preamps. Trust me. They're going to have the same circuit and the AI one is they're going to have in a Rodecaster Pro. And right. so you can hear what it sounds like. Yeah. Um, yeah. Never would look down on that. Uh, John Morse. This one just slipped in there. Um, John Morse says, are you running Pro Tools on the M1? No, I am not because it is not qualified to run on the M1 yet. And I frankly don't really have the time, energy, or interest in going through the hoops to hack it or try to make it work on my M1. Um, you might be able to get it to work if you transfer or migrate from another Mac that has Pro Tools and migrate it to an M1 Mac. And you might be able to trick it into running, but you won't Why? be able to install it. <laughs> so, yeah. So that Pro Tools, here's the thing. They spend an, an exorbitant amount of time testing their stuff before they put it out to the wild. Um, they know that their stuff's being used by pros in big-time studios and they hammer on it and test it, and they are very patient to release new things um, on new hardware. It just takes them a really long time, and well, that, that's how they can try to guarantee that it's going to work when you get it. So it ain't ready yet, and we don't know when. I haven't heard anything. No predictions. <laughs> All right. You get the next one from Ron Montgomery. Because you have uh, the answer. Yeah. When are you guys going to produce your own voiceover booths? That way you have, have it already tuned it. Perfect for the perfect out-of-the-box setup. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the closest that I could say to a voiceover booth that I've helped produce would be the Tri Booth. That was something that me and, and Rick Wasserman did. Years ago, uh, Dan did his own uh, idea based around using acoustical blankets called the Studio Suit. So we've dabbled around it, but I'll tell you, reduce, producing an actual real retail product and getting it out there, and I'll tell you from my experience doing the tri-booth, is super time-consuming and very costly. And so that's mainly why we haven't done it. We just don't have the bandwidth. I mean, uh, that's, I mean Dan, would you, would you, if you had the time, mm-hmm. would you 
release your own competitor to Whisper Room and all that kind of stuff? Would you no, buy? No, I'm a voice actor. You know, <laughs> remember? You know, I mean, could, could I? Sure. Do I want to? No. When I was making Studio Suit, I did not want to be a manufacturer. What I had to go through to make that stuff was, you know, just ask my wife, why are you doing this? Um, no, it, it, it's very time consuming. There are people that make this stuff and fabricate this stuff. If you need a booth, there, there are ones that aren't quite as expensive, but they work. If you can reduce the, your, your, your interior noise by, you know, 10, 15 DB, that may be all you need. And, uh, but I generally recommend if you have a walk-in closet, let's go there first, because that's going to be your best option. That's, and that's going to save you six to 10 grand right there which is Makes a sense. lot for coaching and lessons. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Another question. This one's coming in from J Horace black, long time viewer of the show. He's listened. He's been listening and asking questions. Nice to see you. Nice to see you again, Jay. Um, he says, uh, Hey guys, great to hear and see you healthy. Yeah, we're doing, we're hanging in there. Um, he had a three part question, but this looks like there's one that he's really most interested in answer at having asked and answered studio bricks, panels if they pass your test upon receiving will these work in any vo booth or just in studio bricks oh no for sure they'll work in any booth because a studio brick is just a box and a whisper room is just a box and a vocal booth to go is just a box <laughs> i mean anything that's made out of a wooden box vocalbooth.com is what i meant to say i misspoke sorry um any of these are just boxes lined with acoustical treatment um, so it doesn't matter <laughs> what box you put them in, they're going to do essentially the same job. So if they, if they get them produced and they get them distributed in the U S and they're cost competitive and they sound better than what's already available, um, I'm absolutely going to recommend them. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting one to test out myself. Uh, I sent my address to Guillermo and he said he's sending a sample. So we'll, oh, it's we'll, we'll can't wait to show. see it. Can't yeah. wait to hear it. There's another question. I do a lot of on-camera work where Zoom callbacks happen a lot. And some first-round auditions are also Zoom. And I'm looking at the new iMac for the new improved webcam. And from what I've heard, dot, and dot, that's dot. Where it ends. Well, I don't know what that means. But um, would you buy a new iMac because of the webcam? No. I mean, I mean the webcam is going to be good, but this is also a $30 webcam. That looks really good. I'm using a $150 webcam that looks pretty good. There's a lot of reasons to, you know, not a, I wouldn't say a buying an iMac for a webcam is a good reason, <laughs> but it is the first Mac, honestly, I think ever with a theoretically with a good webcam. So yeah. that is, that is something. I mean, there is something, if you want the ultimate clean workstation look without a bunch of stuff hanging off your screens, like I do, um, having a really nice webcam in the computer is, uh, would be nice. I think it's a 1080p, uh, HDR compatible or capable camera yeah. with lots of brains in it. Kind of like, uh, a light iPhone camera, you know? Yeah. So, but, but, but here's the thing, you know, an I, you know, an iPhone has a great camera on it. An iPhone does have a great camera and there are many ways now to connect that iPhone to your Mac. Like this way. No, well, that, well, that's me. So, you know, um, <laughs> No, but there, there, there are quite a few ways to connect the video right from your iPhone to your Mac um, yeah. for doing live webcam, live streams. And uh, yeah, there's, there's quite a few. And uh, that is the best webcam you'll ever see is the one on your, on your iPhone. <laughs> it's really remarkable. So if you have yeah. an iPhone and you're looking for a better webcam, give it a shot. Um, we've talked about this in the past. I don't remember the name of the software, but... There are software apps that run that then you plug the phone in with lightning into the Mac and it becomes a web camera. I so like check it. those out. Yeah. And I shoot a lot of the commercials I do and some of the other things on my iPhone. And they look fabulous. They're amazing. I mean, yeah. I'm watching some big time YouTubers now that are making, you know, 200, 300,000 subscribers. They shoot almost everything on iPhones. <laughs> it's just, they're, they're, they're just that good. Yeah. Just cr crazy. Yeah. Good. I had to go. I went and bought an iPhone 12 Pro Max. iPhone 12 Pro. What? iPhone 12, 12 Pro Max. Yeah, the Max yeah. one yeah. for my girlfriend's sister. 
And uh, I was so sad that it was not for me. Uh, I was really wanted to pull it out of the box. <laughs> but I get to hold the nice box and look at it. And, oh, there's an iPhone 12 Pro Max in here. Uh, but, uh, man, the camera quality is insanely good. Really, yeah. Really good. Yeah. Well, one of the things we're thinking about doing is having a voiceover body shop tech garage sale. <laughs> because yeah. we got a lot of stuff. I mean... We, we no longer need this killer PC that we've been using. We, we referred to as the beast. Yeah. Um, you know, it, and it ran our entire show and everything. And now we're doing using, uh, uh stream yard, stream yard. And it, it <laughs> simplified things a whole lot, Boy, but yeah, if right. you need a TV studio in a can, uh, <laughs> or a, a great pro tools PC, I would never recommend a PC except this one. Cause it was built for, you it know, was built for production. Yeah. yeah, and it it'll do you know streaming and and pro four tools, camera inputs, four camera, and, and it didn't even break a sweat, no, nope. you know, because it's liquid cooled. It's got a radiator in it. I was amazed when I saw that. Uh, but uh, you know, contact us at the guys at vobs TV if you're interested in that. But we're also thinking uh, maybe we got a lot of other crap that's sitting around. It was connected. There's like a mile of cable that was connected to this thing. I took it all out over the weekend, and it's like. Wow, this thing has got to be about a mile long. So <laughs> a loom. We'll, yeah, you know, it, it, it could reach the moon. It's 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 that much cable. But anyway, all right, we answered all the questions. Thank you for asking them. All right, George and I will uh, be right back and answer uh, your questions about what's coming up next right after this. Because <laughs> he wanted. You're know. watching VOBS TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th with VO Heroes, and you may be watching VoiceOver Body Shop, V-O-B-S, because you're interested in becoming a voice talent, and you looked around the internet, you found that this was a great place to come, and you're absolutely right. Um, but you don't have any of the knowledge yet as to how to get started, and I'd like to help you with that. I've got a free course online, you can take it anytime you want. It's called Getting Started in VoiceOver, and it walks you through the equipment you need, the business side of things, the actual categories of voiceover work that you'll likely be pursuing, and also the mindset that you need to have when you're getting started and moving into being successful at doing voiceover for a career. So if you're an actor or you're not an actor, you want to side grade from another business, you want to learn about voiceover, go to voheroes.com slash start. That's voheroes.com slash start for the VO Heroes Getting Started in VoiceOver class. And I'll see you there. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching VoiceOver Body Shop. It's great. And we're back to say goodbye. Uh, preparation is the key to making things work, and when you're prepared... You do a good show. Luck favors you. It, it, that's right. You know, it's like the, when the opportunity comes, you're prepared for it. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you enjoyed tonight's show and got lots of stuff out of it. Uh, again, you know, George and I uh, will help you with your home studio. If you want to work with George, you go to? GeorgeThe.Tech. And you want to work with Dan, you go to? HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. All righty. Who are our donors this week? We got Shelly Avellino, Tom Pinto. Natasha Merchevka, Jennifer Dixon, Brian Page, George A. Widom, my dad, uh, Rob Ryder, 
Patty Gibbons, Greg Thomas, Shauna Pennington Baird, Uncle Roy, Martha Kahn, Don Griffith, and Stephen Chandler. Thank you, All everyone, right. for making your little donations, or some big and some small. You can do one-time deal. You can do a subscription, which, which most of these people are because we read their names pretty much every single week. And they right. clicked the uh, Donate Now button right below the video on VOBS.TV TV. to do that. Right. All righty. Yeah. Next week on the show, supposedly Lori Allen's going to be joining us. Mm, I fingers know. crossed. Yeah. Come on, no. Lori. Next, no, but next Not week. Not on the Tech Talk, but on the next live show. Yes. On May 17th, mm -hmm. which is next week, because this is next week, not last week. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> we need to thank our sponsors. wrong on my wall. <laughs> you can't hear our director. She's driving us nuts She's right making now. making us laugh. Yeah. She's making me laugh. Okay. She's got a fever, everybody. Oh, Ladies and yeah, gentlemen, the, Sue has a fever. Yeah. We'll alert the media. I'm going to put her on the air next time. Yeah, really. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And, and JMC Demos. Thank you, JMC. All righty. Well, another hour has gone by, and hopefully you've gotten something out of it. I know I have. I know George has, and we know you're getting, you know, aside from getting information, you're being entertained while we're, while we're, while we're uh, doing it. So and we, we really learn stuff it. every dang week that we do the show. It's unbelievable how we've been doing it for 10 years, because there's always something new. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you're not learning, you're not breathing. <laughs> so anyway, uh, anyway, uh, we need to, we see, we've thanked everybody. We've, you know, oh, we haven't thanked, um, our producers, Jeff, our really producer, like, show. That's right. Uh, Sue Merlino doing our technical work. Uh, Danny Burnside on Clubhouse. And of course, there. yeah, Lee Penny, who I know is watching. So uh, <laughs> Hi, thanks Lee. for being Lee Penny. We appreciate that. Um, well, that's going to do it for us this week. You know, we're here to help you out with your home voiceover studio. And you know something? It's not that hard. If it sounds good. It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover body shop or V O B S tech talk, tech talk, tech talk, tech talk, tech talk, tech talk. See you next week, guys. Have a good one. Later.